Hi everyone, I'm Hannah Cousins and today I'm going to be talking about high speed sync. So what is high speed sync and when do we need to use it? Well basically high speed sync changes the way our flash operates and that enables us to shoot at much faster shutter speeds up to about 1 8,000th of a second. Well the next question is, well why do I need to do that? So let's start at the beginning and talk about the regular sync speed first. Now depending on the make and model of your camera, around the sort of 1 200th, 1 250th of a second will be where your flash and your camera sync natively, which means it operates in a particular way. And what happens is when you press the shutter, the first curtain opens, the flash pops and the second curtain follows, end of your exposure. But what happens with high speed sync is the flash actually operates a little differently. When you press the shutter button, the first curtain opens and the flash pulsates little bursts of light continuously. It happens so fast you'll never be able to see it, but then the second curtain closes. So what that means is that when you press that button, no matter how fast that shutter speed goes, therefore how close together the first and second curtain are, your sensor will always be covered with light. So it enables you to go as fast as you like and always have light covering your sensor. So as we said at the beginning, why do we even need to use these fast shutter speeds in the first place? You could say, all right, Hanno, if I'm shooting outside on a sunny day, why don't you just shut down to f16, shut the light out of the camera that way? Well, for me, I do not want the conditions to determine the creative outcome of my shot. If I want to shoot wide open, I want to shoot wide open. Now, the other thing you could say is we'll just add a neutral density filter, which of course you could, but it just means it's another piece of glass in front of the lens, something else to worry about, harder to focus. So we have this technology of high speed sync, which allows us to do this, so we might as well use it. So what would happen if we tried to shoot with a faster shutter speed, but didn't enable high speed sync? Well, what you would start to see is a black bar appearing across your image. And what that is, is it's the shadow of the second curtain appearing across the exposure. And of course, none of us want that, and that results in unusable images. Now, for my particular setup, I'm using a Sony a7R4 and a Prophoto B10, and it actually goes into high-speed sync automatically. I don't need to do anything at all, which is wonderful. But if you find that you're getting stuck at around 1 200th of a second, what may need to happen is you need to go in to your trigger or your flash and enable high-speed sync, because basically your camera is not going to let you exceed that sync speed without going into high-speed sync just as a safety mechanism. So basically you need to go in, tell it that you mean to do this and it is intentional. In the two videos that I'm going to show you next, one was shot in the height of summer and the other in the middle of autumn. But in order to get the results that I wanted, I had to use high speed sync for both. So let's take a look and see what I did. For the shot that I wanted to create today, I've got Tom here and we were hoping to create this kind of dark moody sky, kind of like nice autumnal feel. However, it's a really blue sky here in the UK, which is not what we planned. So it's an interesting situation for me because I wanted to be able to shoot with a low aperture. However, if I need to do that, I'm going to lose all the detail in the sky if I stay at my normal sync speed. So even though it appears to be quite dark here, I'm pretty sure I'm still going to need to be in high speed sync. So before we do anything else, I need to establish an aperture and then find out what shutter speed I'm at and see if we're in high speed sync. So I've chosen an aperture of about 2.8 and at ISO 100, and at 200th of a second, I am getting a white sky. So if I just take that frame, perfect to draw it on. Yeah, it's not very interesting and it's definitely not what I want. So the only way that I'm gonna be able to bring detail back into that sky is to raise my shutter speed. Now, of course, if I do that, I'm going to need to go into high speed sync. So the first thing I'm gonna do is before we go any further is to get some detail back in that sky and get a base exposure so that I'm happy with it before we add the flash. So let's look here and see what we're getting. So that's our flash sync speed at 200. Now, if I go up, raise it higher and getting faster. So I'm getting there about 800th of a second. Now it's coming in, right. Somewhere between about 1250 at F2.8 ISO 100, I'm getting a much better result. I've got detail in the sky, it's nice and blue. Now, of course, Tom is a silhouette because there's no light on him. So now that we've got the background exposure, the next thing we need to do is bring in a flash. I 
now I've brought in our key light, which is going to be a Profoto B10, and we've got a white umbrella deep in there. Now, because it's deep, it lets me be a bit more directional of where it's heading, but also white, I'm not getting too much contrast. At the moment, that's not what I want. So, next thing I need to do is pop on my trigger. So, I've got my TTL S here because I'm shooting on a Sony A7R4, and I'm going to jump into TTL to start off with because at the moment, I'm not going to use the light meter, I'm just going to jump in. We're working quickly, going to jump in, get an exposure and tweak it from there. So, perfect as you are, Tom. So, we've gone from our silhouette. I'm going to jump in and frame up. Okay, let's see where that light's heading. Let's just take a quick look. Three, two, one. Cool. Okay, great. That's looking pretty good, actually. Now, the only thing that I might consider is that I might raise it up a little bit higher because right now I'm not sure if I want to do a full body shot or not. Now, if I was to leave it in this position and take another frame, what might start to happen is the, the flash might start to be lighting up the grass as well, which isn't exactly what I want. I just want it to be lighting up Tom. So I'm just going to jump back and take another shot first just to check. All right, let's come and do full length. And I'll jump down a little bit. All right, perfect Tom, hold there for me. Okay. Yeah, as it goes, we are getting the floor. So it's hitting the ground. So we're getting a lot of light spill down the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do is actually raise the flash even higher. So hope that that bottom half of it is not spilling onto the, onto the ground where Tom's legs are. So let's just do that. All right, you're right there, Tom. Good. Great, perfect. <laughs> That's what you're there for. Brilliant, let's raise that up. Let's have a look there. Okay, I might even tilt it the other way a little bit, let's see. All right, let's try that again. All right, so let's go and try that one now. So let's just see what we get this time. Okay, cool. Good, that's looking much better. Not getting so much spill on the floor now. I might still raise it a touch higher in a second, but we're basically eliminating that spill on the floor, so that's a good sign. So now that's rigged up, that's perfect because we're not getting too much spill on the ground. That's going to allow me to take some full length portraits. I'm going to go in for some three quarters because that's originally what I was intending to shoot and also maybe some close up headshots as well. So because we've got the umbrella, it's round, it's making a nice even distribution of light. However, because it is deep, it's still a little more directional. So now I can just shoot a few frames of Tom, still in high speed sync, still getting the background detail and still allowing me to shoot at 2.8, which is fantastic. So let's take a few compositions and see what we get. And some cool sort of interesting moody portraits but what I'm actually going to do is add another light in the back now I'm going to add a kicker I'm going to be using a two by three softbox in the back I may or may not have to add a grid but I'm just going to use it as a little kicker light to separate Tom from the background now I'm definitely not going for a natural portrait here I'm just going for something quite moody quite dramatic so I don't really mind if it doesn't look completely natural we're just going for something a bit more dramatic and cool so let's rig up that two by three got the backlight in place I fear that we might have the same problem with the light spill so I've angled it up just a little bit however I might still need to do more so first things first I'm actually going to turn my main light my key light off so I can just see what the background light is doing I have no idea what the power is set to but it really doesn't matter I'm going to take a shot and figure it out afterwards so all right perfect as you are Tom hopefully I've placed that just enough out of frame so I yeah it's not in there that's cool okay three two one Good, what are we getting for? Oh, right, okay. Right, so my background light I can see is just a little bit too hot, so I'm actually going to just select uh, it on my air remote and take one stop of power out. So let's just do that super quick and then jump back in. Let's get a little bit closer, it's just about in frame there. Three, two, one. Okay, that's cool, that's looking good, excellent. The only thing that I don't like so much about this is just how much it's wrapping around Tom's face. What I don't want it to do is completely meet the light from the key light. So I'm actually going to add a grid over the top of the two by three, just to give it a bit more sort of, a bit more focus and just maybe add a little bit more contrast too. So let's pop the grid on. Great. 
great. So whilst we didn't get our dark, moody sky, I think what I might do is just play around with this in Photoshop and just desaturate that blue sky. But the point is, at least we have some colour in there. And when the only way we could do that was to shoot with high speed sync when we wanted to keep at these low apertures. So let's put them into Photoshop and see what we get. So as you can see with our shoot with Tom, even though it was kind of dark out there, in order to retain that 2.8 aperture, I had to be in high speed sync because you saw what happened at the 200 sync speed, no detail in the sky, which completely defeats the object of the shot. The whole idea I had in mind was to shoot up at him, be quite dominant in the frame. So with the white out sky, it just would have ruined the whole thing. So that's where high speed sync really worked for us, even on an autumnal day. Now in the next example with Rachel, it was the height of summer and the conditions were quite challenging that day. Now firstly, as you can see in the video, it's extremely windy. So I had to make sure I had her in a position where the wind would blow her hair backwards and not across her face because it just wouldn't have looked any good. Now the other reason I wanted to shoot at 2.8 here is you'll see there's some nice long grass and I wanted to make sure that I could blur some of that in the foreground and just create a little bit more depth with it really. So that was the reason for shooting at 2.8. Now it's the same process here. I had to make sure that we were in high speed sync to really shut down that nice blue sky behind her in order to get this lovely summery image. I also had to be very careful in my composition to make sure that the tree line behind her wasn't sort of cutting through her head or coming out of a shoulder, anything like that. And finally, we needed a little bit more power because that sun was intense and I definitely needed something super powerful just to light up and illuminate Rachel against that lovely dark blue sky. I really want to try and get this with a real dark blue sky behind Rachel, but the sun is not helping me out here. It's high in the sky. It's also coming from behind. So I'm going to use the OCF Magnum, which will give me 1.8 extra stops of light on top of my 250 watt seconds. And what I'm going to do is position this right in front of down her nose and lift all those shadows that are really giving me grief from the sun. So let's try and get it before it fades. In this setup, I'll be using the same process to create my exposure using high speed sync. With an aperture of 2.8, I now take a test shot without flash to establish a good exposure for the background. Next, I add my flash and take another shot in TTL to illuminate Rachel. Now with my flash balanced with the background, I can shoot various compositions until I get the shot that I had in mind. So there you have it guys, that is how you can use high speed sync to really work to your advantage. So you can shoot whatever composition you want, choose whatever aperture you want, no matter on the conditions, that is a way that you can shut light out of your camera, still use your flash and get some really interesting results.